What up, everybody? This is Big Elbow chilling. Not quite like always. Um, conspicuous by their absence are the two little guys, and that is because the heat was on, and I had to get the fuck out of Dodge. So uh, I found me a little hideout and lay low for a minute. So uh, yeah, that's why things look a little different than usual for those of you that are regular watchers. Uh, any new new viewers, welcome to the channel. I'm Big Elbow. Um, I'm a comic reader first and foremost, um, collector second, bad speculator part time. Anyway, yeah. Uh, so what had happened was I went to the Cape and Cow comic, uh, Cape and Cow Con from uh, that was put on by a shop called Cape and Cow Comics, and they are in. I think they're out of Oakland. Yeah, out of Oakland. Now, I've never been to the shop, um, but I have bought from them at various uh, cons in Northern California, and I've always gotten good stuff from them. So uh, I went, and uh, let's get right into it. Um, so this, is, this stuff is that I bought from, uh, from the, the, the creators. Um, this was on my... I'm a big fan of Alexis Zirit, and he was actually there. Um, so I bought this comic and he signed it for me. That's the sig right there. And god damn, they, he did a badass poster, like an event poster. And I was asking and asking and I was like, hey, where can I get an event poster? And no, sorry, we don't have them. I should have fucking stolen off the wall, but um, I didn't. So anyways, um, so funny thing is I was at Alexis's table and I was going to buy a print from him. There were, he had two prints, and one of them was fucking awesome. The other one was good too, but I wanted the other one. Anyways, so I told him, I said, hey, I'll be back because I don't want to carry this the print around with me because it's gonna get, I'll end up fucking it up. And he was like, yeah, it's cool, it's cool. So I went, and I bought this book at another booth because I needed this to, to complete the, uh, it's like a three-issue series called... Um, uh, Vortex of Darkness or something like that. Anyways, I needed number two and they had it, so I bought it and then he, I had him sign it. When I went back, when I went back to his booth, that print that I wanted was fucking gone. I was like, God damn it, I should have just bought it. Anyway, so I fucked up on that one. So, um, yeah, I bought that. I was happy to get that. Not only to get it signed, but also to complete the run. Um, I did actually, big elbow fucking paid cover price. Write that shit down on your calendars. It happened. I paid cover price for a book. But I don't mind. I mean, it's in great condition and fuck it, right? You gotta live on the wild side once in a while. Uh, that, I don't know what it is, but I grabbed it anyways because it was free. Um, I did notice that there's a dedication to, to Jim and Natalie Rudd. Um, I enjoy the cartoonist kayfabe channel. I, I, I like watching their videos, so... I, just, I don't know, that, that's not why I grabbed it, I mean, I just grabbed it because it's free, but just saying, you know, I noticed it. Um, anyway, I got this because it was free. I don't know what it is, really. Uh, these guys were cool, though, they're uh, wrestling fans. Um, I talked to them for a minute, and I was looking in there, and... So it's called Keys and Rails, but... Anyways, the whole book seems to be like this, like these, um letterbox art or whatever you call it fuck it right it's free anyway so I took it and then I got this um, I bought this book called kayfabe a wrestling anthology I'm a big wrestling fan um, one of the this is by a bunch of different people but I bought it from uh, this guy Christopher Alvarez and he signed it for me but you can see there's a bunch of creators on this book and he did a uh, his part is like uh, done in like a uh, not Rick and Morty uh, regular show style like parody so yeah I bought that for him I paid ten dollars for that um, I don't know what the sticker price is, but I was like, fuck it. I, I haven't been to a con where I've seen, um, 
creators selling their books that I was interested in for a while. So I was like, I was, I was kind of happy to get that. Uh, this is some, just some free shit that I got. Um, the Cape and Cow, um, got some bookmarks, uh, some stickers. Thought those were pretty cool. Another sticker from a tattoo spot. Some tattoo guys. And then I got... I don't I don't know who drew this, but... I fucking love Bam Bam Bigelow. So that was hella cool that, that they had that. I also got some more bookmarks laying around somewhere. But anyways, that's the... Um, that's it for the, like... I can exclusive type shit, I guess. Um, I'm going to show the stuff that I bought from various uh, vendors, uh, sellers, and then um, in a separate video, I'm going to show the stuff that I bought from uh, from Cape and Cowl themselves because that's a big haul. So uh, let's get into it. Um, so these ones I got... These were a dollar books, except for two. Um, I got these Kingdom Comes. Uh, that's, I think that's issue. Wait. Fuck. Wait, this is. I'm pretty. They're issues one and two. I'm pretty sure, but I don't know which is which. Where the fuck does it say it at? What the hell? I ain't got my glasses either. Okay, that's book one. This is book two. And I paid half price for those, so those were two fifty dollars each. And I paid a dollar for these. Um, I just thought they were kind of interesting. These are Toys R Us reprints. The first appearance of Robin. And... Um, then just another old issue. Um, I just grabbed those for the fuck of it. I thought they were kind of cool. I don't know if they go for anything. Sometimes those, sometimes those type of things they can go for something. Um, I don't know if that's the case in these books, but regardless, I thought I thought it was cool. Um, I'll keep them, anyways. Um, that's what I got here. So I got um, Dark Horse Presents 100. I already have that, but I think this one's in better condition than the one that I got. A uh, shout out to the Big Rig who put me onto this book. I'm a big Frank Miller fan. I'm a big Frank Miller fan, and this is uh, Lance Blast Off. I had never seen that before until Mr. Rig put me on. So what up, Rig? Thank you for putting me onto that. Um, I got this because. I am a. I'm trying to put together this run of. Uh, of so uh, the, like the kayfib guys, they showed this on their channel for a different reason because of the the Hellboy thing. But uh, I know this issue goes for a little bit, so I was like, "Fuck, man, that was the one issue that I needed to get the, uh, or I needed two more issues. The other one is cheap though, anyways. Um, but to get this." Uh, Frank, uh, quietly story called, um, Blackheart, I think it's called Blackheart, yeah, Blackheart, and, um, you know, I'm a Frank Quietly fan, so I thought that was cool, um, it's, I, this is the only time I've really seen Frank Quietly's work in, in black and white. So yeah, it's a story called Blackheart, and um, yeah, so I was happy to find that because I know this is this was the one that I was like that I was dreading because I was like, shit, man, that's like an eight dollar book or something. I bought this just to I know there are people who like it, so maybe I could pass it on to someone who's who's into it. I don't give a shit about Cyber Frog, um, but like I said, you know these are doll these were dollar books, so I, like I said, I grab it, maybe I'll, I'll give it pass it on to someone who's into it. Or maybe just trade it in. Let's see if I can get more than a dollar for it. And then I just grabbed these. I thought they looked cool. Um, 
I'm not a huge Fist of the North Star fan, but I, I've watched a little bit, and I thought it was cool. It's pretty violent. There's three. There's four. Six. And seven. I might just look at these and then uh, give them to my coworker. He's real big into... Uh, into um, manga and anime and shit, so maybe he'll like those. Maybe I'll, I'll give them to him for Christmas or something. So yeah, those were all dollar books. That was from one vendor. Um, these books I got from another vendor. And uh, these were 20, I got, I got like 26 books for uh, 20 bucks. So I was happy with that. Like when you buy a stack, it's always nice to get when they give you a little break, you know, for, for buying a nice chunk of books. Um, this, I think I made a mistake actually. Yeah, they, uh, I fucked up, um, that Mike Zek cover got me, I thought it was a Mike Zek issue, it's not, it's, uh, one of the Buscamas, I think, Sal Buscama, so, I don't know, I don't, I don't really, it was a mistake, but still not that, not a huge mistake, I don't, I don't really care, uh, this one I got because I wanted to read it, and, it's, I think it's kind of a key or something, or it goes for a little bit, and I don't want to, you know, I don't want to pay for it, so, again, I got it for less than a dollar, so I grabbed it, I've always, the same thing with this one, I've always wanted to check this one out, but that one seems to always go for, like, five bucks or something, more, more than I want to pay for it, so, I grabbed it, um, grabbed a Moon Knight number 11, uh, shout out to my man, uh, Psycho, uh, Psychotronic Squirt Gun. Uh, I was just talking to him the other day. Uh, uh, I watched one of his videos and I was saying I could have got a lot of these uh, Moon Knight um, early Sin early issues of Moon Knight by Sinkevich, uh, the ill the ill one, ill Bill Sinkevich, and uh, I passed on him because at the time I was like he I wanted that that fucking you know crazy wild shit that he does now. You know, like in, or even in New Mutants, you know, that's, that was the Bill Sienkiewicz I wanted. And I was like, ah, he's not drawing that style yet. So I passed up a bunch of these that I could have got in the fucking, as a, my man Psycho says, the filthies, the filthy 50 cent bins. And, um, later on, I've come to appreciate his old, his old style, his, uh, his more like Neil Adams type style and you know really like when i was a kid that's what i was into like mike zack um john Byrne, um the buscemas like that solid figure drawing and um i wasn't into like jack kirby i, I thought that looked just ugly as i got older you know taste developed and shit i always saw Bill bill's um New Mutant style was cool though. Like I was interested in it, but I wasn't buying New Mutants. But I always it always appealed to me. But um, yeah, but this uh, this is like more the style I would have liked when I was a kid. So again, shout out Psycho. Uh, you can find these Moon Knights still, I guess, in the dollar bins if you look hard enough. Um, grab this one. Um, as uh, Dave. West Coast Avengers says, uh, see Todd, by Todd. That's not really my policy, but uh, I did see Todd and I did grab it because this particular issue right here uh, has a lot of sentimental value to me. Uh, when I was in sixth grade, uh, my my sixth grade teacher, Miss Machado, she was super cool and she would let us uh, bring comics uh, for silent reading. And... There was this kid uh, named Isaac that was new. He was a new kid. He moved from Stockton, and me and him traded. This is one of the comics that we traded, and that's how we met. And from that year on, uh, was my closest friend. Like a, he's like a fucking brother to me. 
Um, so Isaac, if you're watching this, what up, man? You know, you know, I love you, brother. And I know you remember this book I texted you the other day. Um, yeah, so it, it holds a sentimental value to me, and it's an awesome book. So uh, yeah, I had to grab that. And this is just um, a reprint of some Jack Kirby Fantastic Four. I'm not a big like I'm not a big Fantastic Four fan, even Jack Kirby, but for less than a dollar. And I'm kind of interested to see. I think he draws the Inhumans pretty cool. Even though I've never read an Inhuman comic in my life, I am interested in that Paul Jenkins uh, series though. And then here's a Daredevil. Uh, this is just a, a Frank Miller issue. Um, I know that these are kind of pricey, so if I get them for a dollar, I'm gonna get them. I actually think I have this issue in like a uh, collected edition, like one form or another. I already have this issue, I'm pretty sure. But um, I don't know. To me, it's just cool to have the floppies too, especially if I can get them for cheap. Here's another one, same deal. Um, I know that issue. Well, these are this is this is pretty beat up. I mean, look at that stable. But um, yeah, I know that that issue is going to go for like in good condition. Is going to go for more than I'm willing to spend. So I like having a fuck it. Like I'd rather have it for cheap in beat up condition than spend a bunch of money on it. That I don't, you know what I mean? Like that, that's just me. That's how I how I how I roll. Uh, same deal with this Daredevil. Um, I'm, pretty, I'm sure Frank Miller's still writing. I don't know if he's drawing. Oh, no. Huh. This is actually uh, Denny O'Neill writing at this time. So Frank, I think this is in during his hiatus or his time away. But it still has the Don't uh, Klaus Jansen art. Let this out of the start to pile up. Why I bought this? I'm not 100% sure. Just so all the X-Men. Oh, 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 I know now. This is, um, again, the ill one. Ill Bill Sienkiewicz, early. Early art. Well, not that early, I guess, but. This is before he got on Moon Knight, I'm pretty sure. And yeah, there's some cool stuff in here. It's, it's just cool to see, like, how artists change, you know, and, uh, like I said, I've come to, I've come full, full circle where I appreciate his old style now, and I'm sure I would have, I would have, at, at that, when I was a kid, when those issues came out, that was the style that I, I was most drawn to, too, as well, um, man, I started off just saying, like, uh, you know, I think I'll buy some classy X-Men when I see them. Because they're they're reprints of good issues that are expensive, and I kind of like to have them. And it's turned into a fucking thing now. Like, I got a shitload of classy X-Men books. <laughs> so these are just red fillers. That's 19. That's 22. I gotta put my... Uh, when I bag these, I gotta put my labels on them so I know what they're uh, reprints of. Like, what issues they're reprints of. Uh, 23, 25, 26, 32. Again, so these were all, uh, I got like 20, 25, 26 books for uh, 20 bucks. So less than a dollar on all of these. I got this, um, Batman, Hellboy, Starman. What up, Piggy Pop? I think you showed this a while back and talked about it. You actually read it. And reading comics makes you smart. Um, I already have the first issue, so and I got that one for a dollar too, so I was real happy to find that one. Some nice Mike Mignola art. You're cool. You're cool. Fuck you. No, I'm just playing. I don't hate uh, Starman. I, have, I, have, I read... Um, the first like three issues of that that uh, mighty series that I know gets a lot of love and you know no offense to anyone but 
I don't know. I found it kind of dull. It didn't. It didn't make me want to read more. So I, I got those first like three or four issues, and I never got grabbed any more. Except for I got a couple issues that feature Batman later because I figured if Batman if Batman can't get me into it, then nobody can, right? Um, I got that for less than a dollar. The the Judas Contract book one and book two. Um, I will probably now just grab me the the dollar reprint of the the one big key that first Nightwing or whatever. And uh, I've just always heard that's a good story, and I want to read it. Um, here's a later issue of Mister Miracle, and I got that because I am a uh, fan of Michael Golden, and he's doing pencils on this one. And sorry for the lighting, guys, but I'm not at the usual spot. Like I said, I'm in, I'm, I'm in the hideout, laying low, waiting sh waiting for shit to blow over. That's a pretty cool page. But yeah, if you're not familiar with Michael Golden, check him out. Um, I know some of you guys might know him from Micronauts. And... Uh, what is he best known for? I don't know, but I'm a fan of him. Oh, he does. Uh, he did a lot of badass GI Joe covers back in the day. Um, here we go. Legends of the Dark Knight, Sanctum. Um, this Mike Mignola doing Batman. I don't know if this is uh, the first issue of a story, but Legends of the Dark Knight is such a good series, man. They all they have fucking top notch. Uh, creator, creative teams that come on, boom, they kick in a, a, like a three, four, even sometimes a one shot little story and, and then move it on to the next team, you know, and whatever. So when I see a team that I like that does a, a little, you know, I get to see their take on, on, uh, on Batman. That's fucking awesome. This, I was super happy to get because, um, shout out to my man, Samuel Trejo. If you're still around, what up, man? Uh, you hooked me up with uh, um, with the with a couple of issues of this three part story, and this is um, the Crooked Man Hellboy, my man right there, Richard Corbin. Um, I grabbed both of these. I know I knew I only needed one of the three, but I just grabbed them both just to be safe. And um, so now I have all three for sure, and I got two of one of them. So I'll probably give that away to somebody. Um, if you guys, anyone's unfamiliar with Richard Corbin, look him up, man. That dude, he's fucking dope. And then doing a Hellboy story, too. And I think that's right up his alley. Crooked Man, I got all three parts now, so I'm, I, I need to read that shit, um, here's some more, Hellboy Conqueror Worm Part 1, featuring, uh, Lobster Johnson, who I always thought was a cool ass looking character, um, back in the days they used to call me Lobster Fingers, cause, uh, I was always pinching people's shit, you know what I'm saying? But that's neither here nor there. Uh, so, Conquer a Worm, that's part one. Here's part two. And uh, here's part three. So, I just need part four now. So, that was those two vendors. Um, those two vendors, and then the, like I said, the kind of like con exclusive shit that I bought. And man, it was cool. Like, like I was saying, like it was in a brewery called ah um, oh, shit, I forgot what the name of the brewery is. Gilman, Gilman Brewery in uh, Berkeley, California. And man, Berkeley is just a cool place. Like, I recommend visiting if if you're in Northern California, go check it out. Super fucking cool spot. Uh, real laid back vibes. Um, there's a lot of cool ass shops. You know, all over the place, and um, 
Yeah, man, it, it's just a nice, it's a nice place, and the weather seems to be pretty good out there. So I had a great time out there. Um, me and my wife went. She actually, she never goes with me to cons because it's not really her thing. But since it was at a brewery, she went and she was, she was uh, throwing back beers, made some new friends, and she didn't even bother me. She's like, I thought she was gonna be like telling me to hurry up or something, but no, she was cool. She just kicked back and was drinking beers. We should have took our pup Buttersworth because it was uh, very pet friendly, but the, the hotel wasn't. So. Uh, yeah, I didn't want to, the fucking, well, see, I, I work at a hotel, so I get an employee discount, and, uh, the, damn, the, the original, uh, hotel that I had booked was pet friendly, but the room, so the room was going to cost me, like, 60 bucks, right, which is great, but the damn, uh, parking was, like, 60 bucks, and then the pet fee was another 50 bucks. So I was like, man, that's... So we had to... Buttersworth had to sit this one out. And I booked at a different hotel that didn't have the parking fee. So anyway, that's just probably boring, you guys. Anyways, uh, so thank you for watching. Um, if you enjoyed this video, congratulations. You got good taste. And, uh, you know, show it. Hit that like button. Share with your friends. Um force somebody else to watch it and uh if you got any questions comments recommendations i love i appreciate all that shit I, I i enjoy all that interaction so feel free to to leave comments and all that and uh, like i always say get off the internet read some fucking comics